Not a lot of mm-hmm. hype to share yet. Gotcha. But definitely would like to meet with you. Yeah, um, do you say you have meetings, like 15-minute um, meetings, like every day in the server? Yeah, I've been doing coffee breaks over there. So uh, anybody is welcome to attend and just casually socialize, hang out for 15 minutes twice a day. Just Not to, you know, get to know people. Okay, nice. And when do you usually, um, um, definitely would like to, is there like a certain the, time um, for that? Do you say you have meetings? Yeah. Like 15 um, minute so far, I meetings, just have like, like every day two in the server? At the same time every day. For me, it's like 9.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, and I'm I'm UTC minus 6 or maybe it's minus 7 right now. Uh-huh. So, so you're yeah. central time? Uh, I'm mountain time, yeah. Oh, mountain time. Okay. Yeah. That's two hours. So, yeah. All right. I'll make it weird. Because, yeah, I miss meeting with you and um, going to the lacrosse um, ranger uh, roundups every Friday. Yeah, totally. I mean, we might uh, bring something like that back um, in the near future. I just ha- was having a hard time being the only person leading those calls. Um, yeah. So if we get a couple more people who want to help lead those calls, we can definitely bring them back. But yeah, for now, we've just got those uh, daily social calls, just to, a chance for people to connect. Okay, that right, sounds good. Yeah, we'd love to hop on those in this chat. And, yeah, um, totally. Yeah. just catch up and because you know like i'm into social listening and some cool stuff i want to show you around that too nice yeah totally all right yeah bro you about ready yes sir 100 person we can get started any more time all right sweet um whenever whenever you're ready sir Cool. In that case, uh, let's just dive straight in. Hi everyone, this is Space Monkey or Avi or Avaril. Uh, I am one of the folks who are building Rip3 and super excited to be presenting, uh, uh, to be sharing like what all we are doing at Rip3. I believe you'll find it somewhat interesting. So to just give you a quick overview, we are a credentialing platform. We are creating a platform to enable communities to sort of incentivize the entire spectrum of contribution and in order to do the same i'm just gonna screen share and just jump straight into it in order to do the same we have a protocol uh this is what the protocol looks like there's this main membership badge you can create multiple tiers you can upgrade people downgrade people do all that sweet stuff and the main membership badge it's a soul bound token that is bound to your account aside from the membership badge you can literally create infinite other type of badges participation, contribution, appreciation, roles, taking badge, all that sort of stuff. And the cool thing about these soul bound tokens is that their soul is bound to the main membership badge. This, there are a bunch of advantages of having a structure like this. First one is it's easier to integrate. The second cooler thing is since there's an on-chain association, you can create rules for each and every tier. You can say that, listen, uh, in order to become an L1, you need to have 35K a bank token. The moment you get to 35k, your badge will automatically upgrade from guest pass. Let's say hypothetically, for L2, it needs to be, you need to attend, let's say, 10, uh, 5 calls a week. And you need to do 10 contributions. And you need to have, what would be the middle ground of, let's say you need to have 200 bank tokens. The moment you get to that, you will automatically upgrade. And the moment you have less than 200k, you automatically move down to L1. So this way, now you're not just managing Discord roles. You're not adding and changing roles, keeping a spreadsheet, keeping track of who all has what, but rather you have a system that entirely automates the the tiers in your community and automatically will be keep moving people up or down the down the ladder. Just to show you an example of what this looks like. So this is a dynamic badge of this community called Reputable DAO. It's a healthcare DAO. That's why they have this heartbeat motive going on. But in their case, we didn't have a lot of tiers to play around with, but we still wanted to segregate between people who are super active and people who aren't. So what we ended up doing was that we have this healthcare, uh, this wave thingy. So we just said that, listen, the amplitude of the wave is directly proportional to how active people are. So the more people activate, uh, like participate in the community, the higher their wavelength keeps on getting. And let's say I do a lot of stuff, I get to the uh, highest wave, 
and if i don't do anything for the next 30 days every single day my wave is going to get a little bit lower smaller and smaller till the time it reaches sort of a flat line and now the cool thing about this is this way you won't have to like i know in bangladesh there are situations where people are like hey i don't know who all are still active or not if they have done anything for the past 3 months or so let's say i want some design done who should i reach out and uh, design guild stuff like these so this way you won't have to do anything all of this will be on chain and in this case the main membership badge is consuming these two badges but can literally consume anything on chain and this is something which i'll touch upon uh, in later i have like a really small presentation specific to uh, how it three could be of help in back this up so this is it for the protocol let me know if you have any questions and at any point of time please feel free to interrupt in that case yeah oh, it looks good Adel. yeah cool in that case we'll just jump straight to the tool so this is what our tool looks like and just going to set up a fake community specifically for dalition ship you can also connect your nosus if you want to be doing payouts the current uh, tool if i'm not wrong is parcel that is being used in dalition ship but you can use something like this it's not a tool optimized for payments but you can do it uh, you can use it for that but would highly recommend using something like utopia for it but yeah let's say we will just upload our assets pretty sure the spelling there is wrong you just enter the name enter the image and this is where we add uh, admins so think of this as a nosis uh, admins and you can do this at later point of time so the cool thing about our tool is our protocol is deployed on polygon but you don't need to have any matic or you don't even need to be on polygon to interact with the tool it literally we have a relay so right now i am on mainnet and the smart contract that our protocol just deployed for our relationship is on polygon so you literally don't have to pay any gas anywhere the entire gas is covered by us so this is what our tool looks like and the first thing we'll do is is just set up these membership tiers so we have builders we have a uh, dao guest and the last one was a uh, dao diplomat yes yes for dao relationship skill yeah so this is just going specifically for our relationship uh moving forward like right after tool demo we'll just uh capture what all can be done for like the bigger bank list so in this case uh, we have all these things could be l1 l2 l3 whatever so we just upload the assets and that's it we are done with setting up the tool took us 2 minutes there are two ways to giving out badges one is the same flow we all would have experienced before that is collecting addresses So in this case, I'm just gonna give myself a diplomat role. That's the one I actually have. You can do a CSV upload. You can enter how many addresses you want. And in this case, as you saw, I didn't pay any gas, so you won't have to pay gas for anything anywhere. And if I go under my community tab, the badge I just gave myself it says unclaim. Since we are dealing with soulbound tokens, we have made it mandatory for the membership badge to be minted right, uh, for it to be claimed. so i came to my contributor view and i'll have to claim my badge so i'll just come again i'll sign this is what every sort of contributor will experience they'll just see the screen they'll click on sign the badge and after they have that now they have an on chain proof that listen i am so and so person but this is where we just are getting started so we are on zk sync as well but that bill is a little behind so how much time we spend on the screen depends on how fast polygon is today we will we'll just let it okay it's a, it's a good polygon day yeah so this is one way to give out badges but then manually connecting bad, badges will end up addresses will end up taking forever and no one wants to do that so the entire community already exists on discord so we did this really cool uh we did really cool integration with discord so what we are doing what we have done is you can connect your discord with a tool and you can just say that listen anyone with a certain discord role they can claim a particular badge that's it that's all you have to do so in this case i'll just add our bot to a fake server i have created so this is the fake bankful server there are a bunch of roles setting 
these are just rows. Let's say row one, two, and three. In this case, I'm just going to add a bot there. And we also ask for like the bare minimum permissions. These are the only permissions. And our code is also 100% open source for the Discord bot. So all we do is just add the bot and we just tell the tool that, listen, for a certain particular role, you let people claim a certain badge. So let's say for role one, you let people claim uh, builders. Uh, you for role two, DAO guess for role three, something else. Once you have done this, you will never have to collect a wallet address ever again. People will just, and we'll just share a link in the chat. And whenever people come onto the platform, based on their Discord role, they'll automatically be able to claim the badge relevant to them. So this is how fast, yeah. Just a quick one, Aviral. Uh, there's a question if uh, there needs to be a bot in the server, if, if it's required. No, so it's not required for the manual process. Like if you are doing, if you are going the manual badge addition route, it won't be required. But we have this participation badge and this Discord auto claim feature for these two things a bot mm -hmm. is required. Got it. Cool, so yeah, this is the link. We'll just share the link and regardless of how many people are there, they'll all be able to uh, just click on this link and claim a badge. So literally community of thousands can onboard instantly. In what, I think four minutes you can set it up and everyone will be able to onboard. But you don't need bot to give people the roles manually. So you have a CSV upload, you do that. Uh, you want to enter the addresses manually, that is also there. So this is just for the membership badge, uh, just on the base tool. And then you have these contribution badges. People do all sorts of stuff. Uh, Bankless right now has this coordinate uh, flow that is there, but the give uh, right as of now is not on chain. It's just something that is stored inside the server. I know for a fact that coordinate is looking to sort of make that information on chain. We might work with them at a later date to sort of uh, bring that part on chain. But meanwhile, what can actually be done is that people do all sorts of contribution. You can just set up the schema. This is the form that people will be submitting when they are doing a particular contribution. And for every single thing people do, you can they can get an on-chain proof that listen, so and so stuff was done by me. So for example, like there are folks who are running the entire bankless uh, podcast. And there are multiple people who participate in each and every one of them. With, this, with a functionality like this, everyone will have an irrefutable proof that, listen, I did so-and-so. I am a person who is incredibly good at post-production because I've done, I've contributed to all these spaces. So in this case, this is what the flow will be from a contributor's point of view. Let's say design for the badges. I think it took me 30 minutes. And I'll just share the link. And in the category, I'll say that this is under the design category. So this way people can submit all the contributions that they have done. And as an admin, you will just see all of this stuff under the request tab. And this is where if Gnosis were connected, we would be able to do a token payout as well. So in this, this case, I'm just going to say uh, clubbed it and I'll approve the badge. So now once I do this, the person will have an on-chain proof that, listen, this is the stuff that I did. And the person who approved it from the community, this is their feedback. And all of this goes to the metadata. And the coolest part is a lot of this information is actually there on chain. So smart contracts will be able to read and figure out that, hey, so-and-so person, this is their expertise. And I will just go to my contributor view to claim it. So by default, from a protocol level, the membership badge needs to be claimed. All other things, they need not be claimed. But the base uh, behavior of the tool is everything needs to be claimed. So in this case, I'll just claim the badge. Maybe there is something wrong with my internet why the image is not loading. Yeah, and the badge is going to be mine. So this is just for the contribution badge. Like Polygon will do its thing. My badge got minted. Now coming to participation and all the other uh, role badges. So now what you can, uh, in this, in case of Bankless, you guys have a really good integration with SeshPod. But the thing is, it's all centralized. It's not something uh, that is available outside the ecosystem or just available in general. So bigger thing. So, and the workflow, if you want to give poise, would be to find a designer, get them to uh, make something, create a link, 
uh, wait for five to six hours and then manually uh, share links with everyone. Gil has this really cool uh, feature wherein they distribute uh, the POEP links for you. But that's also uh, not a system that works really well. Like they have done a phenomenal job at implementing it, but there's still few things that could be improved there. So, and the other thing is POEFs in general, they are on XI, the amount of information on chain is fairly limited. And it's not, it's a really cool system, but it has its advantages and it has its flaws. But what you can, what we have done is that, why do you need to design something every single time? You'll just have a template that will just keep on populating basis the information you put in. So in this case, that's all it takes to set up the batch. And let's say a similar call is about to happen. I'll just go to the bank full server and I'll just say slash start. Before a call like the current one we are on. And I'll just say, let's say uh, rip demo day, demo day 12. Uh, demo day is going to last, let's say for a minute. And uh, people need to attend 50% of the call to get a badge. And I'll just say it's going to happen in general voice channel. This is the badge that I want to give. Now I won't be joining this uh, voice channel, but if I do, I'll get a badge minted right away. Because if I do join it, uh, I'll be kicked out of the current one. But this is the sort of message that you will see. After the call ends, our bot will just tag and say that, listen, you got a badge minted that says so-and-so stuff. And that badge will be available on chain. So whatever you enter, the same information just goes there directly. You can also give out badges with custom artwork. And you can also use this template functionality. Uh, so making uh, the entire call attendance credential becomes super easy. It's just a Discord command that you put in. And then you can create these custom badges type, like whatever else you want to give. And now this is for the credential. Now where all can it be used? So our credentials, they work both with Kill and they work uh, with uh, Collabland as well. So let's say uh, we create an L1, L2, and L3 badge, and we make this on-chain condition that you need to have 35K bank. You need to have 200K bank and uh, 35, uh, 350,000 bank. So the way, whenever your bank uh, holding, it reduces or increases, automatically your badge will update. And Gil and Collabland, both of them, they have like one block uh, update. So every six to seven seconds, the entire, uh, the entire, role system inside Discord will be matched with the on-chain behavior. So in this case, since this overall person is a member, they joined the community sometime back. You can also manually upgrade every anyone's credential. So in this case, let's say they're a diplomat, Averil has been phenomenal. So if we upgrade uh, their badge to builder, everywhere, wherever my badge was, my Discord role will change. Let's say you are using Clarity, Log, APY or higher governance on snapshot, all of that will update right here, right now, just in this path. So these ones, they can in the community. And this upgrade functionality is something that can be automated as well. So coming to this governance tab, this is something that's actually pretty cool. So we have a V1 of this live right now. So right now we set up these three badges. What we can say is, let's say we don't have a token or for a particular uh, sub kit, we do not want to have a token and we just want proper on-chain governance. So we can just say people who are builders, they get three votes, people who are DAO guests, they get two and DAO diplomats, they, maybe they get zero votes. Let's just make this one, let's just make this two. So people who are actually contributing, we can do proper on-chain governance like this, straight up. From the tool we can just copy this we can paste this in snapshot and that's how easy it is to just get started with the on-chain governance and in this case this is not the only way to do governance it, because bankless already has a bank token let's say in case of a DAO relationship itself maybe we say that listen we do not want to simply rely on these badges we also want to take token holding into consideration you can just enter the bank token you can see it's on ethereum and now Let's say, uh, let's say both Salma and I are part of this. Uh, Salma is a builder, I am a DAO guest, and both of us have 1,000 bank. In, in this case, what will happen is Salman will have 2,000 voting weightage and I'll only have one. The moment I upgrade to builder, basis the work, basis the automated system, I'll automatically get a 2,000 voting weightage. 
And let's say if I move to Dow Plumart, my voting weightage will move to zero, regardless of how much token weightage I have. So this is just the V1. I've shown you the credentials, like we can give out credentials for contributions, we can give out credentials for call attendance, and we can automate the badge holding. This way we can unlock truly contribution-based governance. In V2 of this, we'll have an option on the UI itself, wherein you will be able to say, anyone who attends a call, give them extra 0.05% vote, whatever number you want to use. For anyone who does a contribution, give them 0.1 extra vote. So let's say there are two folks, both of them are built up. In the past three months, one person, they've been phenomenal. They have been attending, let's say, uh, 10 calls every single month uh, and doing like one contribution, doing five contributions. So yeah, in, in that case, they'll have a total of five votes, like one vote each month, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And the other builder who might have not done as much, or rather, let's say anything in the past three months, they'll still have the two votes. So this way, we can create proper contribution-based governance. Like the more you work, the higher your governance weightage gets. And since the badges that are being used, they have the specific on-chain activity of what is the exact thing you did, what is the exact call you attended. Therein, we can also create this context-based uh, governance. We can say that maybe anything. You don't even have a design guild role badge. Maybe you can set this one, this one proposal out. Or maybe people who are super active there, they get a higher governance weightage. So this is something that can be used to create really cool uh, governance structures. So this is it for the base tool. I know I rushed it a bit. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me check the chat. And after this, would love to show you what all is possible outside of this. This is just sort of... Yeah, um, we'd love to see some examples with uh, some communities that's already using Rep3. Yeah, 100%. So in that the, case... Uh, code dog example. I love the um, artwork there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So in that case, let me... I was trying to make this grid. I just lost this file. Uh, I'll just export like a bunch of these examples. Uh, Iron, let's just get Opal. So we have eight uh, sort of. Yeah. Just a quick one, Face Monkey. I just want to check uh, with uh, Joe because if Joe is leaving it uh, in five minutes, or if you have any questions because you work on this, uh, on PO apps and all, all, all of this, Joe? No, I don't really have anything at the moment. Um... I've already seen this demo once, so it's kind of a refresher for me. Awesome, awesome. Uh, back to you, Space Monkey. For sure. And Joe, there's something cool that you might be interested in. I'll uh, get, like sort of what all is possible with backtest. We have discussed that. I just put it in sort of a short day. So in this case, what you've done is there are, so in case of Kaldao, and this is something that goes live, uh, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, but we have a flow. So in case of Kaldao, the only contribution metric that is super important to them is how much you have, like if you have staked the token, how long you have staked the token for and how active you are in governance. That's the only thing. Uh, it's a decentralized investment platform. So what we did there was that we created this really cool uh, gamified sort of incentivization mechanism for people there. If you have take some token, you will be able to claim a particular type of badge. Let's say this one. So this is the bronze one. There are eight tiers. So you will be able to claim a particular badge. The longer you stake the token for, the cooler the sort of outside ring keeps on getting. And then the more you participate in governance, your badge will upgrade from, let's say, bronze to diamond. Let's say you have done... So for bronze, you need to have five consecutive governance proposals. If you have done seven... Uh, there is a gold in between. Let's say you have done nine, you move to diamond. If you miss the next four proposals, you automatically move back to bronze. And let's say you unstake. There is a different badge. You lose all your progress and you move to a suspended badge. You come back, you stake your token, and you start the game again. This is sort of a proper game of how long, how active you are in governance, how much you have staked, and how long you have staked for. And the system resets every single time you unstake. And the flow is super simple. So this is what the flow will be like.
uh, for anyone uh, who holds any cult token uh, if you're staking the cult token do participate in this this is going to be super interesting you will just come on the screen you'll connect your wallet automatically we'll uh, let you know that listen so and so badge is what you're eligible for based on your activity you claim the badge again completely gasless don't even need to have polygon set up on a metamask or any of your wallet let's say we claim the badge this is what we see and now i go and i uh, vote in their bespoke system or i stake for two months i don't un- unstake and i let it stake for two months automatically my badge will keep on updating and if i miss the next two it will automatically go back so this way you won't ever have to interact with the red three tool itself once you have claimed the badge so this is something that goes live next week there are a bunch of other communities that we are working with to do some similar stuff specifically talking about bankless this is something wait, i think this would be the one that makes sense so yeah the idea is that community is not just the people who are participating in this call it's a lot more in people do there's so much activity in case of bankless out itself on the governance forum there's proper snapshot there's twitter interaction there are podcasts if you are interacting with them token holding staking and so much more every single touch point that people interacts with that should essentially be considered part of the community not just the people who are hanging around in discord and the same and every single interaction that they do inside the ecosystem is something they should be incentivized for so imagine how cool it would be to have a badge that just captures your total token holding you have a proof that listen you have held so and so so much bank token for the longest time you have a badge for that keeps on updating similar to what i showed for the cult on how active you are in case of a snapshot and the same for discord like how many calls you attend if you were active there if you were silent just silent participant what's your overall activity in discord because there's so much interesting conversation that happens in all these like billions of channels in bankless and how many contributions you have done let's say if we can hypothetically also capture coding so every single thing that a person can do in bankless if all of that is captured and there's an on chain proof for all of that how cool would that be so and all of this would be this is what sort of a protocol would look like you would have badges for let's say twitter participation all these things you'll have multiple badges and for a lot of this stuff there could be these dynamic badges that just keeps on updating based as the participation the more active people are the cooler the badge keeps on getting and all of this combined creates this one bankless passport yes, thank you you are so sorry i didn't catch that whoever it was it's this ever muted so yeah. probably um just some audio on here yeah i thought it was a question and i thought i missed it but yeah thank you for clarifying that yeah i think they were just unmiked and it was some background noise yeah 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 understood so the idea here is that you get all these individual badges but then all of them coming together to create one passport that is an abstraction of every single activity that people do and that passport will be 100% unique for everyone because no two people have the same exact participation in the community people could have different amount of tokens they could have missed one proposal they could have more activity in a certain sub dao and a system that goes for every sub dao is just a passport that showcases that listen this is how active i am on the governance front and the community that i interact the most the sub daos i interact the most with are maybe research guild maybe some other guild stuff like that so it's going to be a personalized uh pass badge that will be available to everyone will be unique to everyone based on how active they are and that just keeps on evolving over time so just talking about these uh dynamic badges these are just super dumb visualizations of what could possibly look like so in case of twitter we can just say that listen this is how much you interacted with the to the page and for every single post you created you get a dot for uh, the overall token holding it could be something like this for governance we can just create a grid the idea is it could be anything so for example we forefront uh, we have this incredibly stupid idea wherein the grass keeps on getting greener the more you interact in discord the more uh, proposals you create if they get voted the more number of trees you get and the tree size is dependent on how active people were with that and then uh basis i think they have this internal tool called pulse 
basis your activity in pulse the sun keeps on getting bigger and accordingly the sky keeps on getting brighter so anything ridiculous is possible with these dynamic batches and you can have like a discord batch that says maybe somewhat similar to what apple music does when you select the song you can just have different sizes bubbles that just captures how active you are with a particular guild and all of this flows towards passport so again this is a super dumb visualization to capture what all is possible so for everyone's badge it will just say that listen if you are l1 l2 or l3 but then even there this is a super simplified uh, possibility a uh, super simplified design on what all is possible but we can say that the color is tied to how active you are on twitter the shape complexity is tied to how many contributions you do and the circles on the top could be your streak on governance and because of these three variables itself everyone has something unique and all of this activity every single badge or every single upgrade every single downgrade all of this is captured on chain so this is something that can be used let's say end of a season for retroactive incentivization maybe if someone wants to start up a new project it will not now be that you need a certain l3 a certain l2 it could be if you have done something like this earlier and all of this could be used to create a truly permissionless ecosystem inside of a community so this is sort of what we are trying to get to and again since we have all these things we can also create we can take the context based uh, system even further we can say that let's say there's a proposal that is going to impact how the governance forum is run over there we can say if you have never interacted with the governance forum maybe you get to set this one out the same things so we can gate we can give extra governance weightage we can reduce governance weightage basis how many credentials you have of a particular sort of aspect of the community and this way it just becomes like this really big game that everyone is playing everyone is upgrading and there's no one way to participate with the community there's no one way to play the game it could be which whatever aspect of the community interests you the most that is where you participate more and accordingly you will have something to show for it and that is the same thing that will be consumed in the community to give you extra weightage that sort of thing is being discussed and of course for retroactive incentivization and all sort of creating stuff so yeah, this is sort of what rep3 is let me check the chat to see if there are any questions that i might have missed out on just um, gonna... need demo um avral uh just reading a couple of questions from brett uh any anyone please feel free to unmute and ask uh, just reading this one is gasness a short term thing to bring adoption or will rep3 maintain gasness minting into the future and uh, two any plans to expand discord bot to remove the need for collab land or guild cool so for the first one it's always going to be gasless it's not an adoption thing we'll be covering gas for anything forever on polygon will not be able to do it on zk sync or when we move to uh, mainnet so that that polygon uh, so the way po app works right they don't really charge you for gas because they're cheap both on xi and polygon and all similar chains but in the cases where if you want to run the entire thing on let's say uh, mainnet itself therein we'll be creating these wallets wherein you can if you want everyone to pay the gas billing good that is something that can be done right away but if you want if you you as a community wants to sponsor everyone's cash then you can just keep filling up that wallet that just keeps on giving taking money from it and just remember like paying gas on everyone's behalf so that is also something that's possible and in the other one we do not uh, wish to expand on what collab land and guild are doing i think those are phenomenal teams and they are doing really cool stuff and we are sort of uh, it specifically in the credentialing stuff is what we want to do and yes, yes the uh, yeah I please guess, i guess so my question is so it looks like you can upgrade just keep dynamically changing the badge so that it essentially downgrades or goes back to you know the starting badge can you just remove badges then so they're so yeah. token but you can still remove them from people 
So what we do is replace and update that badge to the like starter badge. Yeah, yeah, we we upgrade badges. Like we're not a big fan of burning badge as it sort of removes context. The same badge keeps on getting updated. So Got that it. particular badge will have an on-chain history of if before this this was the status, before that that was the status. Gotcha. And let's say, let's say for a role badge, let's say for grants committee, right? Because therein we can just say that right now this badge is suspended. But that person will have a proof that in so and so season, I was the member of grants committee. So you're not a big fan of burning badges. Fair enough. I'm also I have a question. Is there? Can you make dework NFTs prerequisites for getting your badges? Uh, yes, but then there's a small uh, caveat there. So dework badges, right? If I'm not wrong, please someone correct me if I'm wrong. But the last time uh, we are looking at the smart contract, dework badges do not hold any uh, any information metadata or on chain. Like no two badges are distinguishable, and they are all coming from the same smart contract. So let's say a dework badge from Lex uh, DAO and a yeah. dework badge from Bankless. Their NFT. Sorry. Their NFT. Yeah. In my open but, sample, I got different NFTs for each of the D work tasks that I do. But their images are different. Uh, to a smart contract, they're virtually the same NFTs. Like there's no distinction between the two. Okay. I got gotcha. you. So that's the only thing. But th that is the only reason why D work would be tough. But let's say they change their smart contract and now there is some meta uh, data information telling that, hey, this is the community this badge is related to. In that case, yes. But yeah, we can capture anything on chain. We can, you can say even if a person follows Bankless on Lens, they should be able to claim the badge. Also, have been done two proposals on Snapshot and some, like whatever weird permutation combination is possible. Or if I'm just adminning maybe just part of my administration in my guild is just, okay, I can validate that you've done these D work tasks so I can either approve an upgrade to your badge. Oh yes, 100%. So D work, uh, we spoke with them regarding APIs. Their APIs are in sort of super public and available to everyone, but we can use those APIs also to do this thing. I, I would, I would think that they would want you to be able, they should be able to read their metadata. So if they had a way to create badges, you know, that were unique and on chain based off their metadata, you know, across D work tasks, that would be a cool feature for them. Oh, yes, 100%. I am not sure, like, I can't speak on the rationale for that on the API status on the smart contract. I believe it's a tool that already does a wonderful job when it comes to bounties. Yeah, it's just a tea thing, yeah, I'm guessing. But yeah, all speculation from my end. Huh. Hey, hello. Uh, I want to kind of uh, open up why everyone is asking about the dework tasks and dework badges and stuff. Because Twitter participation is nice, joining a meeting is fine, but the actual work that we do is mostly on these task trackers like dwork or our own bounty board and stuff like that so we need to prove that these people did actual work it's not like i don't know cult DAO that uh, you hold some coins and then go on snapshot to vote on governance voting on governance is important yes but we need actual work proof of actual work so that's why we are asking about these um task tracker uh, kind of uh, tracking stuff. Yeah, I, I am familiar with uh, with how Bankless works. I, I have done some contributions here and there. Super low-key. But yeah. So uh, in case of D-Work, that's the only thing. But uh, I can speak with them again to try to figure out what the status on their APIs are. If that is there, that if it can be consumed 100%. And if, let's say, we can consume Coordinates API, then both of those things can be consumed to create a credentialing system on top of it. 
So, I mean, this just doesn't seem like a very big administration task for me on the guild level. Um, considering the administration that already happens around Coordinate, um, we're kind of, you know, if we had some additional things like Bitcoin passport, passport to verify members, if we use maybe some, you know, when you start using the features of Coordinate, um, you know, being able to, you know, we already have the information to manually enter in an address to give somebody, you know, to create that badge. So it may be a lot of maintenance to manually do it on the DAO level, but I think for on small group levels, it seems pretty straightforward and super interesting and helpful. But I uh, the automation also, like, it's just a question of APIs, to be honest. On-chain data will be difficult because a billion of badges, like, tons of badges are already minted from D-Work. But using the APIs, all of that can be done. See, here's so that's big, also... Here's the big thing in Bankless is we're trying to figure out how to track talent across projects and departments and guilds. Well, if people had dynamic badges... You know, and generally people get involved with a guild, then they get involved with a project, and their activity within the guild decays over time. Now, they may still be act very active in a project, or they may be even active in another DAO. And then, you know, every three months coming back to Bankless DAO. And so if there were dynamic badges that helped us show where our talent is in projects in Bankless DAO, that would be a huge benefit for Grants Committee because then they would essentially be able to, um, you know, look at the the badges that the scope squads and the project teams have and know what talent's being used across, you know, at that given time across the DAO and where. This is... This is exactly what's possible uh, with the with Rep3, uh, Ernest. So you don't just have one guild. You have like, so I think 21 guilds. Uh, and people move from one place to the other. They do contributions in all sorts of places. You'll be able to figure out that, hey, listen, from a call participation point of view, uh, that these are the guilds where this person is contributing. This is where they spend their time. These are the contributions they did. Let's say we get D-Work API as well. These are the tasks that were done. And all of this would be in badges itself. And even your passport will say how active you were. Since it's an abstraction, from a, just from a glimpse, you'll be able to tell that maybe in the past, uh, let's say, three months, they haven't been super active. If they have been super active, these are the guilds they have been contributing to. And specifically for each guild, you'll have a badge. You'll be able to figure out, okay, cool, these are the channels where they are most active. These are the channels where they are most active in terms of part in terms of attendance participation and the same goes for contribution the same goes for messages so all of this can be done and this is the thing where uh, i would say rep3 does a really good job of and also i missed a question so brit we do not uh, like i don't i personally do not think that rep3 is something that would replace the work because they have a really cool Kanban boat feature. That is not something that is on uh, uh, in our pipeline or on the roadmap. Like that bounty functionality is something uh, that is not something that we want to that we are focusing on. And on if the badges are transferable, so uh, th there is this one exception. Let me just share my screen and talk about that exception. So in this case, all of the badges that are associated, they are bound to the main membership badge and the main membership badge is bound to the wallet address. But the cool exception is, let's say my wallet is compromised. So there are two things that can possibly happen. So when my wallet is compromised, there are people who have access to my wallet I don't want to have access to. So in that case, I can just raise a request uh, onto the protocol itself like to the community saying that so-and-so thing happened to me and I want my credential transferred. In the other case, like community can just verify and the moment they approve it, the moment both the someone from the protocol and the token holder, they approve of a transfer, the main membership badge gets transferred. Since everything else was child of the main membership badge, the entire credential set moves together. That is another advantage of having a structure like this. So it will not be that you will have a 
thousand like you'll have hundreds of badges you'll have to pay gas fee to transfer 100 badge you won't have to pay gas fee but in this case it's just one badge that's transferred and these other badges they are not just move they're not moving anywhere they're still bound to the main membership badge so this is the only badge that gets transferred and along with it the entire credential set moves and in the other case of wallet being compromised so the multiple tiers that we spoke of so in the tool itself so we created these three tiers builders dao guest and dao plumats there is another tier that is just hard coded in the system we call it uh, l0 is just level 0 the moment you move someone to l0 all further bad minting stops that essentially means that the badge is now suspended so someone will either manually have to approve like manually have to change their tier from suspension so that they can just keep on working they can keep on getting their credentials so this is uh, an exit mechanism we have hard coded in the protocol itself to take care of uh, bad actors stuff like that yes so yeah that's it on the three please let me know if you have any other questions and just want to thank you thank everyone for joining for are uh, taking all this time out of your busy day i know crypto days are super hectic there's so much stuff that's happening and with the recent uh, market uptick it's a really cool time to be building awesome uh, thank you for joining us uh, space monkey i think this was an awesome demo anybody else uh, crypto dad you yeah Yeah so for, first of all th- thank you for the demo this monkey so every time you come back you, you come back uh, with a more brilliant uh, product feature uh, so that's a awesome job uh, so i want to ask what's your revenue model so in order for dao to use your service uh, like a is that like a monthly subscription fee or, or how it works sure uh, so and thank you so much for product uh, and yeah so thank you so much for saying that So the way we make money is every single thing I showed you on the tool, on the one with the black screen, all of that is one hundred percent free. That is gonna be free uh, forever. And the other sort of things that I mentioned, like stuff like dynamic badges, stuff like creating this automated bad basis token activity, basis governance. So we call these strategies uh, in house. The whatever stuff you need for the community that. is 100% free will be free forever It, these dynamic badges and these automations and these badges that adapt basis the on chain activity those are the things that we monetize on and we don't have a monthly subscription fee it's sort of a one time setup fee and very soon we'll have a v2 wherein you will be able to do all of it uh, yourself so you will be able to create multiple adapters you'll be able to create different strategies and for those strategies is what uh, rep3 will be charging for cool thanks anyone else yeah thanks a lot space monkey um we had a meeting earlier this week and we talked about some of these different strategies that you guys are implementing so it's really interesting to um hear how you guys are not just doing all this dao governance work and and voting work and reputation work but also um doing this kind of side hustle thing where you're able to create strategies for people based on the stuff that you learn along the way as well um so yeah kudos for that what you've built is really amazing as crypto dad says you you keep coming back and showing something new um the governance um demo that you gave there that was really cool the the bankless passport thing makes a lot of sense um i'm a little sensitive to the word passport because i feel like um bankless dao should be kind of almost more of a permissionless place and uh pass passports and nations and it just connotes borders but that's just a term it's just a word that we could replace with anything uh the concepts that are contributions um and how people can get involved and how they can um utilize their own contributions to gain governance strength and gain value in the system um the work was mentioned quite a few times i just drafted up a, a dm which i was about to send to lonus from 
Um, and I'm just going to see if um, he can maybe make some of that metadata accessible. And um, yeah, it would be great to see those D work tasks uh, represented in the badges as well. So thanks a lot again, Space Monkey, for, for coming and showing us this today. Thank you so much for the kind words, NF. And I didn't think of the word a passport as a permission thing. I just thought it's just the markets where all you have been. But, and also in the chat, I just realized it's very similar to Gitcoin passport. So we don't really have any good terms for what all we have built. We literally call it strategy in house. We have the tech, we have the designs, but we do not have what to name all this stuff. But yeah, that's... Passport. Really yeah. It's a sensitive one. It does work. And I love the Gitcoin passport as well. You know, I was just talking about it earlier today um, and everything that they are unlocking and uh, the the sense of an ID is great. Um, but then again, there are a lot of anon, anons around here who, um, you know, maybe don't want to be um, <laughs> associated with a passport. Who knows? Maybe I'm just overthinking that. Um but uh, beyond um, beyond terms and what we call these things, again, I think what you've created here is super cool um, and really looking forward to uh, getting going. We're, we're going to deploy some for the AMAs, uh, and there's been talks for Fight Club as well. Um, we have some other SPTs that we'd like to integrate. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole world of SPTs and credentials and identities out here these days. Um, so seeing how you guys are able to work with other protocols, I think is really the, dis the distinguishing factor uh, between how products are going to succeed or not. Yeah, for sure. So 100%, no one person is going to be able to do it all. It's just about composability. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Space Monkey. And uh, to everybody, thank you for joining. Um, tomorrow, we have a demo. By the way, we've, and we have a second uh, demo uh, every week uh, now on in collaboration with Fight Club. Tomorrow is Shield. I have uh, dropped an RSVP link on the side. Shield helps eliminate scams uh, from Web3 platforms and communities. Uh, please do join. It's at 5 p.m. UTC. And also next week, uh, same time, demo. Uh, we are also exploring a demo with Gitcoin Pass uh led by Jenga Jojo, who wants to introduce some uh, anticipable mechanisms uh, due to recent events. Uh, so that's coming. Uh, we'll let you know on uh, the time. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.